So uh, when you're ready, just gently closing your eyes, if you wish. You can also finish off your drinks and, you know, even look at each other once more to get that sense that we're here together and the beauty of that. People from around the world who could have been doing anything else but chose to be here to meditate, to develop the goodness of their heart, even if you didn't feel quite up to it, you felt exhausted, you felt busy or rushed, you made it here, even if it's four in the morning <laughs> for Joe over there. <laughs> You still made it here, so it's really inspirational. <laughs> yeah. So let's just gently settle into our bodies. Ah, oh, stretch a little bit, perhaps. Adjust, <laughs> yawn, breathe out, land, whatever it is you need to do. <clears throat> Lean back if you're exhausted, you know, take the support that's there. I have a lot of cricks in my shoulders, so just exploring that. See if my shoulders want to settle in a different way. Sometimes we push our limbs into certain positions, but really, if we can just listen a little bit, they may find their position naturally. And even with our eyes closed, we can still sense that we're here practicing in a group. With people many of you have known at least through the Zoom, and that means energetically too, for a long, long time now. And others who can hopefully feel the, the warmth, the safety, the vulnerability perhaps of this space. We can be ourselves, even as the teacher. You know, if I came thinking I had to smile, I had to be joyful and pretend to be something else, that would be a whole lot of pressure and heaviness and actually insincerity on my part. So when we can be authentic, even where it's uncomfortable, bring those bits that don't feel quite settled yet to the practice, then we can learn compassion in a much more authentic way. So just coming in contact with the feelings in your body. Perhaps helping yourself land and settle by noticing the feelings in your buttocks, your legs, your feet, any part of your body which is in contact with the ground or your cushion, your chair. Feeling that weight, the gravity, the support. And allowing your body to relax into that. Perhaps with a deep out breath. Or a yawn or a sigh. For me, it's happening naturally. And also remembering your connection with the atmosphere around you, the space at the top of your head, feeling that elongation perhaps, slight extension through the spine, not pulling anything, but just inviting that perception. And feeling the spaciousness around you filled with a sense of peace, Solitude, emptiness of all the busyness that came before. This is your personal cave. 
for the next 40 minutes or so. So you can fill up that space, that cave with whatever atmosphere you wish. Perhaps imagining that someone who represents compassion to you is sitting with you or looking in with kindly eyes into your inner world through the eyes of compassion and understanding. The eyes perhaps of a Buddha or a spiritual friend, maybe a, a friend or family member if you're fortunate enough to have someone in your life who really cares. And if that's difficult for you, if no one comes to mind, just imagine how that might feel, what those qualities would be. What do you most need right now? Perhaps even words come to mind, soothing words. Words of acceptance, kindness, tender care, whatever they might be. How does that compassion feel? What are its qualities? Perhaps a sense of softness or warmth, comfort, ease. Perhaps you perceive compassion as a particular color or hue surrounding you. And just gently breathing in with that feeling, allowing it to suffuse your breath. And be carried through every part of your body with the breath, as the breath spreads through each and every cell, bringing oxygen, bringing soothing and bringing that feeling of compassion. <clears throat> Perhaps tinting your whole body with the color of compassion if that resonates for you. <clears throat> Sometimes the first flourishing of compassion is just that willingness to listen in. A willingness to learn, to understand, to be curious about how you feel and to listen with that tender care without judgment, 
with a wish to bring about some comfort, some ease. Sometimes just that listening is enough. The way you listen to a friend. So listening in to your inner world, including your body. Feeling each part of your body Intending to the sensations, to the feelings you experience with loving, tender care. If there's anything you can do to ease any discomfort, you do that unhesitatingly. Giving all the time and attention you need to each little part of your body, even those insignificant parts. Maybe a little fingertip or toe. Using that support of your breath to breathe in to any parts of the body. For me, it's my chest. It feels very low energy right now. So just being gentle with that and allowing this healing, soothing breath to gently soften up any feelings of tightness or heaviness in the chest. For you, it might be another part of your body which is perhaps has some disease or old injury. It's perhaps connected with an emotion like anxiety. Sometimes our bellies feel tight or 
intense. Just allowing this beautiful, tender awareness to work in its own way without anything being forced. And if you need any support at any time, remember you have this spiritual friend or the Buddha, someone who represents that compassion right there with you, lending you their eyes of understanding, eyes of compassion and kindness. I'm going to be quiet and allow you to practice in whatever way is nourishing for you. Sometimes, as we do in the meta meditation, we can use phrases of compassion, perhaps related to suffering, but always focused on bringing about an end of that suffering. That's what makes compassion uplifting sublime, a divine abiding for the heart. We meet whatever's there with kindness, with a wish for freedom from suffering. May I learn to meet myself with kindly eyes, May I be free from suffering, whatever works for you.
And now I'd like to invite you to just notice how or whether this practice of compassion has soothed some form of suffering, discomfort, tiredness, just the effects of life, whether it's soothed that and brought a little bit of peace, brought you a little bit closer to freedom from suffering. And really recognizing that capacity that all of us have, the potential we share for freedom from suffering when we meet it wisely and with compassionate eyes. And however much peace, however much harmony you experience inside right now, extending that to all beings, especially those who may be struggling, suffering in small ways or in unimaginably large ways. Wishing them to freedom from suffering. May all beings have safety. May all beings have shelter and food. May all beings find comfort, emotional support, friendship, and joy in their heart. Wherever people are losing hope, May they find hope again. May all beings recognize their own capacity for awakening and have the conditions to practice this beautiful Dhamma taught by the Buddha. the complete ending of suffering. May my practice do something to help. Imagining this beautiful compassion spreading throughout this world, softening the pain, stopping the violence, finding ways to feed those who are hungry. Bring safety to those in fear. May all beings be well, be safe, be at ease. All beings, human or non-human, far or near, 
visible or invisible, wherever there is life, may it be safe and protected. May all beings find peace. Sabe satam Sabe pana Sabe buta Sabe pugala Sabe ata bawa paria pana Sabe itio Sabe poesa Sabe aria Sabe anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Winiparika Awe Rahontu Apia Paja Hontu Ani ga hontu Suki atanam pari harantu Dukha munjantu Yada lada sampadito Mawe gachantu Kama Saka Sadhu 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 it's wonderful. Even when we practice compassion, we can end with a smile. <laughs> and hopefully, just by meeting however you feel, you brought a little bit more kindness and care and peace into your world. If not, that's okay too, because compassion has many uh, layers and it has to start by just turning towards whatever's there, sometimes very gently and sometimes it's not easy and sometimes we don't have attitudes of compassion, but we can see where we're stuck and we can just learn to soften around that and give ourselves trust, give patience to the process, understanding that uh, sometimes the difficult bits are part of it all and they can really enrich our hearts and our practice and our understanding of suffering and an ability to reach out to ourselves and to others so it's quite a profound practice and uh, even though this is a meta group sometimes a bit of compassion it's, it's just another form of love it's just the way meta meets that which is a little bit more painful um it's not always appropriate to say, may I be happy, when you're not. <laughs> it feels like more of a demand, doesn't it? May I be happy, but I'm not happy. <laughs> you know, may I be free from all suffering. Actually, that's better, right? May I be free from suffering is a little bit sometimes more realistic. And that's also a beautiful wish. So um, there is another 10 minutes, which I thought might be useful. 
because uh, we haven't done a lot of compassion practice in this group before, and perhaps uh, you might have comments, observations. I'm hesitating from saying the word question because it puts me in a role of being the one who knows, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's just a rhetorical question, isn't it? And sometimes we can just offer something in reflection to that. So anything anyone would like to share is most welcome. And uh, please don't feel shy. And if you feel you don't want to speak on the live, uh, it is being recorded. You can write in the chat as well. No, you would like to say something? Yeah. Um, Venerable, would you like to explain people about the difference between the empathetic distress and the compassion? Because many people okay. get burnt out from the thinking that they are doing compassion. Yeah. Would you like to? <laughs> I thought it, it is good. For, I mean, the way yeah. I think is, um, you know, put a lot of loving kind. I, I look at it as a speciality of the loving kindness kind of for the people who are suffering. But, you know, I try to understand. I'm, I'm picking up the, your teachings from last Saturday now. I try to understand, um, you know, how the other people feel, but I know it's my feeling of how the other people feel. It's not, I exactly wouldn't know how they know, but, you know, somewhere I meet kind of that understanding and feel compassion, but it doesn't mean I feel angry with them, I feel sad yeah. with them, yeah. I need to look after. The main thing is needing to look after my mind, and as Buddha said, that the best person is a person who's kind of looking after themselves and looking after the others. Yeah. But the second person is the person who's looking after themselves. Right. The worst person is the person who's not looking after themselves, but looking after the others. So it's a kind of a balance between that. And mm. you shouldn't be angry because somebody is dying or, you know, uh, burning your self because of that but you should look after your mindset and be compassionate to them so that's a bit of a fine line yeah uh, to understand that absolutely thanks for that yeah and it's really nice to hear your understanding of that because everybody expresses it in different ways that resonate differently with the people here and uh, you know with ourselves obviously we're for all finding our way and I think that's the line isn't it that's so tricky in our lives in general whether or not we're practicing active compassion which I'm sure most of us are in many ways and uh, yeah the first part of that the difference between compassion and empathetic distress I think is uh, related to something that used to be known as compassion fatigue in kind of I guess psychology circles or maybe like circles of people who did give a lot like social workers or you know psychologists there's this tendency for compassion fatigue and actually, according to the Buddhist teachings, that's a bit of a misleading um, term because compassion isn't, as the English word would have us believe, or the Latin word, suffering with. It's actually being able to meet the suffering and not shy away from that, but also focus on bringing that person out of suffering. And of course, to do that, we also have to be uh, not falling in with them, right? So there's a certain amount of empathy that it's important to guide a compassionate response in a way that's meaningful for a person. You know, it's it's very helpful if we can try and step in their shoes, so to speak. But one way that we can maintain our emotional boundaries by staying embodied and recognizing that if we do start to respond with also with grief or also with the suffering, that we take ownership of that, right? We don't say, well, I'm feeling what you feel. No, you're feeling what you yourself feel at that time. And we have to handle our own emotions too and not presume that the other person's creating them in us, right? We're having our own emotional response. So I think it's about being able to hold space for ourselves whilst being with another, but not falling into it with them if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I mean, it's difficult to put into words and I'm still learning this, right? Because I tend to sort of feel quite deeply for people. But I think there's a difference in feeling deeply for people with compassion and actually thinking that we feel what they feel and starting to fall down in a sense, you know, get swamped and, and turn and 
and the whole thing goes into a kind of empathetic distress, which then becomes our problem. <laughs> it becomes more suffering. So the way the Buddha taught compassion is to focus on the um, freedom from suffering. So yes, you meet that person, but you resonate with them in a way that soothes their suffering and tries to look for ways to help them um, alleviate that distress. Yeah, and that's where it's beautiful because that's a very, very lofty thing to do. So yes, you touch in and then you try to lift, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I'll just read um, some of the comments in the chat. So that was perfect for today. Thank you. There's been an easing of pain and of the anxiety about the pain. Yeah, great. There's a real beauty about meditating with others. I deeply appreciate the ground that's been covered today. This week, I felt I needed to have more confidence at work and I struggled with that. I realized that in my practice today, the phrase, may I have no doubt, appeared. And I found interesting the link between self-confidence and self-doubt. Yeah. Thank you for the amazing meditation. It feels really healing. Great, wonderful. It's lovely when spontaneous phrases pop up from the heart and that's why I think it's nice to allow the space for that. Everyone's phrases will be different. And in meta too, to try and avoid getting into um, anything that starts to be rote. You know, you're just saying it as a kind of, yeah, as a prop, but you're not really feeling it from the heart. So there's another question. I'll try to um, get to a couple, yeah, there's two. I'll see what I can do. I probably might not get to both. How does compassion feel in the body? For me, it was a fierce feeding. I guess feeling or feeding, not sure. A fierce feeling around the heart. Very interesting. Yeah. There is no right or wrong way to feel compassion, you know. And there are, as I say, many stages, many layers of compassion. So it might be a sudden a sort of waking up to the suffering perhaps or a feeling of like fierce protection something like that um it's all good i mean one of the other questions i guess that we can have as an ongoing question in our practice is is my meditation leading in general to wholesome states increasing and how is that manifesting in my life um is it you know causing me to have more care and concern for others and also um yeah, more compassion to myself around that. Um, so how does it feel in the body? It will vary for different people at different times. I think for me today, there was a sort of sense of softness, a sense of protection and support. It's hard to put into words emotions and physical feelings, but I had this kind of bubble around me and filled it with lovely um, protective energy. And there was a sort of uh softening I mean at first I felt like this hollow in my chest like really exhaustion and sort of an em emptiness and I just allowed it to be and kind of let the breath go there so yeah yeah all sounds good to me <laughs> could we say that this is a different aspect to metta yes absolutely I like to define it that way that it's the way that love meets suffering or it's the way love responds when it encounters have people in distress or uh, the more difficult emotions we experience it's the way love responds it's almost like if Ma if meta was the love a mother feels towards her child it's the kind of wish to protect to cherish to focus on that child's well-being um, compassion is how a mother's love responds when that child's sick when that child isn't well then the mother will respond slightly differently there'll be a sort of leaning in there'll be a a certain, oh, you know, what can I do to help? Like, how can I comfort you? There'll be a reassurance, comforting, a sense of wanting to bring about an alleviation of that distress. So it's almost like it has some medicine there. There's some medicine for the disease. Um, so there's a tenderness. I think it's, for me, it feels a little bit more um, sobering and it feels very connected to the noble truth. So it feels very profound in a way and a little bit more tenderness perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's that balance between then feeling it kind of so strongly that you start to, you know, get overwhelmed by that and that 
idea of I'm here to help and bring you out of suffering. Like a mother will be the strong one in a way, right? She'll be strong and she'll be calming that child. So sometimes I um I like to envisage that as an idea of compassion to myself. Like that there's another part of me that's older and wiser and more nurturing that can hold that little part of me that's feeling I can't cope, you know, that's feeling I'm alone or whatever. So yeah, it can be a different aspect of metta. Um, <clears throat> there's still some questions. I knew there'd be a lot around this. Um, I'm struggling with fear because of stalking by a person, although every step is taken now. Sorry, because every steps are taken now for help. Yeah, the meditation helps very much to relieve the feelings of fear. Good, good, good. I'm so sorry you've had to experience this, and I'm very happy that those steps that you've taken that for help have been taken. Hopefully, that will be more than enough to keep you safe and protected from the external threat. That's very difficult, and I'm so sorry that you have to experience this. Um. Yeah, well done for reaching out for support. That's so important because we can't just meditate these things away. I mean, there are real dangers and threats in our lives and situations that need to change. Sometimes we can't change them. I mean, I really feel for the people in war-torn situations, what can they do? You can't say, well, do more self-care. I mean, yeah, if there was some food, they could. If there was some shelter, they'd take it, you know? Sometimes there isn't. And sometimes compassion has to address those very basic facts, right? The basic survival, basic safety. This is a prerequisite for everything else. So I'm so glad that you've been able to find that support externally. And um, hopefully you have lots of friends and people you can continue to process this with because, you know, meditation will help, but there might be some trauma there, which needs, you know, more long-term support from some counseling or maybe trauma therapy or something like that. I mean, you know, don't underestimate that. Sometimes we think, oh yeah, I should be okay now. Meditation will be enough. Believe me, most monastics, I mean, unfortunately I haven't got much time for this, but most monastics have some kind of personal counseling supporting them, especially bikinis who are starting stuff up. Um, they really rely on that a lot, actually. It takes them a while to realize it because there can be feelings of shame around it. But actually we all need support with our particular struggles and um, I'm really happy that you have that and uh, you know if if sometimes even the meditation is a bit difficult or it feels like one more thing you've got to be strong for then just play a guided meditation that's why we record these things and just let yourself just take in that that emotional support even listen to the chanting or you know whatever it is so but I'm very very glad that you're safe and now working on the feelings of fear yeah and they are feelings. I mean, our nervous systems get locked in a state of fight flight and they will continue to produce those feelings of a threat even after the threat's subsided. So sometimes it takes time and we have to be really patient with our poor old nervous systems because they're trying to protect us, but they go a little bit overboard sometimes. So sometimes it's about, you know, just letting ourselves know, yeah, I'm safe now, I'm safe. You can just say to yourself that you're safe. Yeah. Okay. Or even may I be kind to the fear. May I be kind to these feelings of fear. It's like that little child, that little frightened child that's really fearful, but you know that there's no fear anymore. There's no danger anymore. You can just assure that child, you know, I hear you. I'm not trying to get rid of this feeling. I'm not trying to make you feel better. I hear that you're afraid, but you're safe right now, you know. Sorry. So when well, I think we've gone a little bit over yeah. time and I like, you know, in 40 minutes or so your um, Dana time also comes <laughs> and the visitors might also come. And, uh, and thank you very much for the meditation, the guided meditation today. And it's on compassion and it's um, not what, you know, many of us are that familiar with. And thank you very much for teaching that today. And uh, for all of us, um, there's a new newsletter out and uh, there's an updated events page in the Anukampa project, uh, dot org, And uh, I'm just uh, 
sending a donate um, link, but if you go to that and you can see the other tabs as well, in the events page, there's a lot of exciting things um, about the new monastery move, about uh, uh, some mini Buddha statue projects, and also Ajahn Ramali is coming, those uh, tour details, and Ajahn Brahm is going to do an online retreat, those it things. Means. So go to the okay. website and have a look. Ajahn Ram and Venchanda retreat because he's yes. in Australia, so it's both of us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In the evenings, he'll do the mornings. Yes, and um, and uh, please uh, uh, be you know if you want to get more involved, um, uh, type you know send an email to team at anukampa project uh, dot org. Um, because when you go to a new monastery, as you know, there's different things and uh, we are not close to um, uh, many of the supermarkets. And uh, so the guests won't be able to pop out and get something. So everything has to be organized better. Uh, and also there's a needed items uh, tab in the anukampaproject.org where there's some immediate needed items are written. So if you are if you are not close to Oxford or if you are in abroad, um, there may be uh, online supermarkets, UK supermarkets that you can buy the things and get it delivered. Um, and uh, the date of move is 22nd of March. And uh, so don't deliver things to um, number six Maywood Road uh, after that. Uh, so, uh, so get get in touch with um, get in touch with the team at Anukampa Project to to see where you need to deliver when. And uh, thank you again, Venerable Chanda. Uh, I know that you are not well, and a uh, lot of you know if there's a lot of stress and uh, with doing all these things, you need to. Uh, I hope you'll have time to take a little self-care for yourself and self-compassionate to yourself as well yes, uh, yes. because we need you uh, yes, for the yes, yes. project you'll have me thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much don't worry yes don't worry it happens uh it's been a very busy time because i taught two retreats back to back with no time in between to prepare so i just had to push my old brain you know continue push push when I wanted to uh rest and then the newsletter anyway and now I'm going to America tomorrow but uh <laughs> I'll be away for three weeks and uh so Venerable Lepeka will do the meta meditations she does beautiful meta meditations and also the sitters and uh, also the chanting on a Wednesday and they'll be just plain old meditations on a Tuesday and Thursday as usual and um I'll be back Shortly after that, in America, I'm teaching Meta, a Meta retreat. So I will have some time on that retreat to just lie down and rest and practice by myself. So I will come back. Uh, I'll come back how I am. That's it. No pressure. <laughs> so take care, everybody. And uh, yeah, just be kind and gentle more than you think you need to be. All the best.